Hi, this is Greg Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's get started with the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about the conformations of cycloalkanes. Cycloalkanes differ a little bit from linear alkanes in the fact that there's a restriction in rotation of bonds due to the fact that the ends are tied together in a ring. So if you compare, for example, hexane, hexane, six carbons, um, in the linear fashion versus cyclohexane, what you can see is that the ability of the molecule to rotate bonds in hexane without being tied in a ring is much greater than cyclohexane. So each of the carbon-carbon bonds can rotate. So this bond can rotate freely, this bond can rotate freely, that one can, that one can, and that one can. But if you take a look at the cyclohexane ring, uh, you can't, for example, rotate this bond too much. You can wiggle it a little bit, but in order, if you rotate it 180 degrees, other bonds in the molecule would have to break apart. The fact that it's tied in a ring restricts its conformational mobility. In the previous video, we already talked about the fact that bonds that eclipse from uh, one carbon to the next uh, have electron repulsion, which leads to torsional strain, and that atoms or groups which are larger in size that come close together bump into each other and that provides steric strain or increases the energy of a molecule because of atoms bumping into each other. In ring compounds, we also have an additional strain element that arises from forcing the bond angles on an atom to be larger or smaller than their ideal size. So if you recall an sp3 hybridized carbon is a tetrahedral shape, right, tetrahedral shape which has 109 degrees, 109.5 degrees is the ideal bond angle. Okay, if you have a ring which, which makes that bond angle much smaller or forces it to be much larger than that, it increases the strain energy of the molecule and we refer to that as angle strain. So all of these things together, the restrictions caused by the ring structure restricting the rotations of bonds leads to what we call ring strain, which is the extra energy of a molecule that is imparted by these strains induced by rings. Extra energy from being forced to stay in one conformation because of rings. And we'll see that as we look at different ring sized cycloalkanes. We can get an idea about ring strain by looking at the heat of combustion like we talked about in the last video. So if we look at the various different size rings from a cyclopropane up to the 14 membered ring, what we see is that the extra energy that we get from being a ring versus the same molecule being an open chain linear alkane is significant. So the highest amount of ring strain occurs in a three membered ring, that's the highest energy one. Four membered ring is also pretty high in energy. As we go to a five membered ring, there's less ring strain and the molecule is more stable. The lowest energy ring compound is actually six because all of the bonds are staggered so the torsional strain is minimized and all of the angles are near the ideal 109.5. So that's the lowest energy ring would be a six membered ring. As you get it larger you introduce some some angles and some torsional strain that it can't completely alleviate until you get about eight nine membered ring and then as you get larger and larger rings you get a little bit more flexibility and it's able to alleviate any strain with the ring. But certainly among the sizes of ring compounds we're going to be looking at, a three-membered ring is the highest energy or the most strained, and the six-membered ring is the lowest energy or most stable and the lowest amount of ring strain. Well, I mentioned cyclopropane was the highest amount of ring strain, and we can see that because the bond angles are so much more acute than the ideal 109.5 degrees. As a matter of fact, if you look at the carbon-carbon bonds between uh, the carbons of a cyclopropane, it should be 60 degrees. In fact, what happens is that uh, because it, it just simply can't adopt that acute of an angle, it's the actual overlap of the hybrid orbitals are bent. So they're not completely uh, end to end. They're actually overlapping a little bit bent. Um, but it's a very strained molecule and you can see why cyclopropane would be the highest amount of ring strain of any of the cycloalkanes. Here's a model picture of the cyclopropane, both in the stick figure as well as the space filling model. What you can see in cyclopropane is that since there are only three carbons, three points define a plane, 
So the three carbons of the ring all lie in one plane. The hydrogens that are hanging off of the carbons are all eclipsed with each other and you can see here from this if we look at the side view, this is more like a Newman projection. You can see that this bond is eclipsed with the bond in the back, this bond is eclipsed with the bond in the back, and this bond is eclipsed with the other bond of the ring that's in the back. And you can see that in these space filling models as well. Cyclobutane has one additional carbon, so the ring is just a little bit bigger. Um, and that provides just a tiny bit of ability to wiggle. So you can see that in cyclobutane, the ring that is defined by those four carbons is not completely flat. It's actually bent just a little bit, and it does that to alleviate a little bit of torsional strain. Now, it's not perfect, but at least it's not as bad as cyclopropane. That's why cyclobutane ring strain is a little bit less than cyclopropane. However, relative to larger rings, it is still high in energy relative in terms of ring strain. As you get rings a little bit larger, the molecule can get a little bit more flexible and then it can twist so that you can alleviate some of the torsional strain that occurs with eclipsing bonds. That can be seen in cyclopentane where now it looks more like an envelope. You can see four carbons that are almost in a plane and then one carbon puckers out of the plane. That is done to help alleviate strain at least for some of the bonds, you reduce the amount of torsional strain, and so the ring is no longer completely flat. That's why we gain a significant amount of stability with cyclopentane versus cyclobutane or cyclopropane. And the whole molecule can wiggle, so this one can flap up, or this carbon can flap up, or this carbon can flap up or down, uh, and the molecule can wiggle a little bit. And so it can adopt a little bit more conformations than cyclobutane or cyclopropane. When we get to cyclohexane, the cyclic alkane that has the least amount of ring strain, what we see is that it can adopt a conformation where all the bonds are staggered and all the bonds are close to their ideal 109.5 degrees. And I've drawn this cyclohexane uh, in this conformation. I've shown pink hydrogens and blue hydrogens because they are a little bit different. And this ring structure with all the carbons we refer to as a chair structure because it, it looks kind of like a lawn chair. So if you imagine, here's the foot of the lawn chair and here's the back of the lawn chair. There's the back of the lawn chair, there's the feet. So it kind of looks like a chair, that's why we refer to this as the chair structure. One thing you can notice from this chair structure is that some of the hydrogens are pointing straight up or straight down, the ones I've identified as pink, which you can see from this view a little bit better. And some of the hydrogens that I've listed here in blue are pointing out away from the ring. We refer to these as equatorial hydrogens, equatorial, and the pink ones that are straight up and down as axial. Okay, so th actually those are in slightly different steric environments and we'll see a little bit later the conformations of cyclohexane and how those steric environments change when you have axial versus equatorial. One thing I want you to notice about these cyclohexane chair structures is the positions of all the groups relative to each other. If you look down any specific carbon-carbon bond. So let's take a look, for example, on this structure on the left, this carbon-carbon bond. So we have a carbon in front and a carbon in back. And if you were to sit right in front of that and look down that carbon-carbon bond, that would be equivalent to this. Look what it looks like. We have a pink hydrogen down here, a blue hydrogen out to the right, and the carbon-carbon bond of the ring to the left. That's the front carbon. On the back carbon, we have a pink hydrogen straight up, we have a blue hydrogen down to the right, and we have a carbon-carbon bond down to the left. So it looks like a Newman projection if you look at it from that particular angle. And what you can see is that all the bonds are staggered 60 degrees apart from front to back. And that's true if you were to rotate this molecule and look down any of the carbon-carbon bonds, you would see exactly the same thing. Well, I mentioned that the hydrogens in a cyclohexane chair structure are different if they're pointing straight up or down from the, from the ring or pointing out from the ring. If you turn the molecule and look at it top down, you can see those differences. These pink hydrogens that you can see on the molecule, you can see three pointing up on every other carbon. Um, and on adjacent carbons, there's one here, 
one here and one here, but they're pointing straight down, so we don't see them in this picture. In the space filling model, you can see that here. So notice that the axial position alternates every other carbon on one side of the ring, and again, every other carbon on the bottom side of the ring. Those are again referred to as the axial positions because they're pointing straight up and down from the ring. From our top view, it makes it a little bit easier to see the difference between those axial hydrogens and the equatorial hydrogens which are pointing out away from the ring. Now this is coming slightly up and this one's going slightly down, this one's coming slightly up and that one's going slightly down, etc and that's alternating as you go around the ring as well, but you'll notice that out here there's more space. When we start to talk about cyclohexane conformations when we have other groups on there, the position, whether it's axial or equatorial, has a very different steric environment. Notice how close in space these pink hydrogens are. Even though they're every other carbon, they're very close in space, whereas the equatorial hydrogens from one carbon to the next are much further apart in space. There's a very different steric environment for the blue equatorial hydrogens versus the pink axial hydrogens. Well, this shows you a moving model of the conformational motions of a cyclohexane chain. And what happens is this ring can actually flip its conformation. When this ring flip happens, we go from one chair structure to another, and every carbon is inverting. Every axial position that was on one conformation is converted to an equatorial position in, this, in the other chair flipped structure. And vice versa, every equatorial position becomes an axial position on the chair structure. If you notice this chair position, if you take a look at any specific carbon, so I'm going to look at this carbon right here that I'm pointing to. Notice in this chair structure that equatorial hydrogen becomes axial, axial becomes equatorial as it flips back and forth. Likewise, the other hydrogen here that's axial becomes equatorial and equatorial becomes axial as it flips. And that's true for any atom along the position. Equatorial becomes axial, axial becomes equatorial. Um, for this one, equatorial, axial, equatorial, axial, and vice versa. For this one, axial, equatorial, axial, equatorial. So each position is changing as the molecule moves between one ring structure to the other in these conformational motions. If we analyze the energy of that ring flip, actually you can take a look at the positions halfway through as well. It, it kind of looks like this. Here's one chair structure on the left. As you start to rotate some of these bonds, we actually increase in energy. And, it, and you can actually talk about a confirmation that looks like a half chair, sort of. That can keep moving all the way up so that instead of a lawn chair, it looks like a boat. We refer to that as the boat structure because both of those uh, groups, both of the ends are pointing up. And that's higher in energy than a chair structure. Now that can twist a little bit, so it kind of dips a little before it gets to that boat. And then if you continue moving this one down, you get to the other half chair, and then all the way to the ring flipped isomer. So the chair structure actually goes through a higher energy boat conformation on its way to the other chair structure. Now let's take a look at a cyclohexane structure that actually has some substitution on it. And here what we can see is that there is a difference in which particular chair structure it adopts. So for example, methyl cyclohexane now has a CH3 group. And I, as we saw before from the models, if that is positioned axial, either straight up or straight down, that's a more sterically crowded position than the equatorial. So if you take this structure on the left, and flip this side down and this side up to get the other chair structure, now the methyl group becomes equatorial. All the other hydrogens being equal, the difference in these two structures is the fact that in this one the CH3 is axial, in this one it's equatorial, and so the equatorial one is more stable or lower in energy by about 1.8 kilocalories per mole. In this conformational changes, more of the molecule exists in this conformation than the higher energy conformation. And that's why we, it's important to analyze conformations so we can predict what 
orientation the molecule will be in when it undergoes reactions. Here's a model view of that which shows the steric crowding a little bit better. Here you can see one chair structure that I drew first where the CH3 group is in the axial position and it's getting close to these hydrogens. You can see it actually bumping here in the space filling model. From the top view you can see also the crowding as that CH3 group starts to bump into the hydrogens. We refer to this as a 1,3 diaxial interaction. And it's more steric crowding than in the equatorial position. Here you can see now the ring flipped isomer where the CH3 group is in the equatorial position. Notice all of the axial positions, three up alternating and three down alternating, are all hydrogens. The CH3 group is out in the equator of the molecule where there's plenty of space around it and it's not crowded. You can see from the top view as well that that CH3 group is much less crowded than it was in the axial position on the previous slide. Here's a motion model showing the ring flip. There it's axial and there it's equatorial. There it's axial and there it's equatorial. Notice I'm, I'm showing this going through the boat conformation. So there's the chair, boat, chair, boat, chair, boat, chair. So you can see how that crowding occurs and how it alleviates the crowding by flipping to the um, equatorial methyl group rather than axial methyl group. In the next video we're going to talk about a different kind of isomerism that is stereoisomers of molecules because when we have restricted rotation due to the ring we can have groups which are attached in exactly the same places but on opposite sides of the ring. Those are different molecules. And uh, we'll see how that affects conformations in the next video.